I know I told you we were done working on this thing for a while, but we're waiting on a turbocharger for the Shelby, okay? We're gonna be right back on the Shelby, and if it comes out as good as the head did from Turbo Dodge Parts, then it's gonna be worth the wait. If you guys didn't see the video where the head comes back, click up here somewhere. Anyway, by the time you watch this, I bet the turbo's back and I bet we're working on it, but for now, we're gonna do a paint and body restoration on my favorite pickup truck, my 99 Dodge 1500 318 with an NV3500 five speed manual. Now listen, when I say paint and bodywork restoration, let's just, if you're a bodywork guy, calm yourself, okay? We're not doing, okay? It's not, you're not gonna like it probably, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna do the kind of stuff that I grew up with, the kind of repairs that I grew up doing, okay? Stuff you can do in your yard for a couple hundred bucks and make a truck look a million times better than it already does, right? I grew up driving junk my whole life. I know some of you guys on this channel wanna see flame up restorations. That's just not what we do, right? I'm comfortable driving older stuff. I don't want my stuff to be perfect, right? I know a few of you guys on the Shelby really want it to be like 100%. And I get that, right? That's a that's another school of thought, and that's fine. So with this truck, what we're gonna do is, there's a pick and pull right down the road. We're gonna go see if they have a driver's side front fender. Okay, this truck needs a driver's side fender. It needs some rust repair in the rocker panels. I'm gonna show you how to do that on a budget. Really easy stuff. We're gonna do some headlights, taillights, and we're gonna do a paint job on this truck in one of my very favorite colors they ever built trucks in. Dodge Intense Blue. We're probably gonna pull these trim pieces off, see how it looks without the trim first, because most of the Intense Blue trucks were sport trucks and so they didn't have this. Of course, we're gonna keep the emblems, we're gonna redo the stickers on the tailgate, but the main thing is, is can we get this truck looking really good from 10 feet away? All right, there's a silver one in row three. Oh, spotted it. See what kind of shape the old fender's in. Nope. Oh, here's a red one. What do we got? Okay, that's pretty good. Actually, you know what? That might just be the one. Yeah, I think I feel pretty good about that. All right, got our ABS module loose, fuse box loose, battery box most of the way loose. I think it might be hanging on down here, but we're gonna start pulling this fender off. Just a few bolts, actually a bunch of bolts, a bunch on the front side here, and then these guys, and then one down here. Well, just like that, we got us a nice clean 30 something dollar fender. A little bit of, a little bit of rest right there, just surface though. That's from the battery leaking acid, I'm sure. But the rest of it, very solid. Nice unit, that'll work. All right, we've made it home with our junkyard front fender. We're gonna swap that out, pull these guys off right here, off the bed sides, and then start working on these rocker panels. All right, update. It's been a couple days. We got rained out for a couple days there. New fender is on the, uh, man, I don't love the, the body panel gap, but it is what it is. I think this fender was a, as a hair warped but that's okay. It lined up good enough um, for, <laughs> for, the, for the level of body work we're doing on this truck. We're not worried about that. So anyway, new fenders on, uh, got everything mounted back up on the inside. Uh, emblems are off. I measured from the door to the emblem, up from the body line to the emblem, and then between the two emblems so that those can go back on kind of in the same way. I took those off with some fishing line. I just kind of snaked some fishing line in behind them and you know, took two hands and just kind of went back and forth with it. Um, that's the best way to get those emblems off that I found. I ripped the trim off. Um, bumper came off actually awesome. Uh, it's three, three bolts on either side. I sprayed them with a little bit of PB blaster. They came right out. Uh, tail lights, headlights are out of it. Um, today we're gonna, we're really short on time. We're gonna work on these rocker panels. Uh, the passenger side is not too bad. It's just got this little spot right here. Um, the driver's side is not too good. Um, this truck, we never deal with rust here. See how it's, I mean, it's just not the best. 
Um, we never deal with rust here. I mean, it's not gone, gone. There's enough to where I'm about to show you how to save this with some spray foamage. You guys might be familiar with that technique already. Um, we really don't deal with rust around here. This truck came from the salt marshes of Louisiana. Um, I mean, shoot, you look at my 08, doesn't have a spot of rust on it, 200,000 miles. The frame is literally painted with stickers on it still. But this thing did sit in the salt marshes, so it got the rocker panels a little bit. The rest of it's in pretty good shape. We got a couple little soft areas uh, right behind the wheel right here. Um, so we're gonna, listen, it ain't gonna be perfect, trust me. All right, so what we're gonna do is use an age-old combination of a wire wheel, some rust inhibitor, spray foam insulation, a little bit of Bondo, and uh, we're gonna repair some rocker panels professionally, not professionally at all. All right, step one is to use a fine, um, well, not fine threaded, what would you say? Fine, whatever, fine wire wheel. Put some sunglasses on. And let's get all this loose stuff off of here. All right, so this is what we're left with. Got all the loose stuff kind of out of it. Didn't even know this down here was that weak. That's okay. That's why we're doing this. Awesome. All right, now we spray some of this magical stuff on here. Rust inhibitor. So now the driver's side is dry. You can see this stuff like chemically bonds to the rust and makes it like a different, it's not like, it's not just spray paint. It does all kinds of science. So next step, great stuff. So this great stuff is gonna give us our structure. Yeah. This stuff is just the miracle of automotive bodywork, I'll tell ya. Passenger side. By the way, as I uh, get all this pinstriping off of here, Thank you so much for helping me choose the color on this truck. It was gonna be emerald green. I meant to say this at the beginning of the video. I was leaning towards emerald green, and then uh, you guys said intense blue, and we're doing intense blue. So that's exciting. That's the only color Dodge I've never had. I don't, I don't think I've ever had, I know I've never had an intense blue. I think I've had everything else. All right, we got 457,000 miles of trim adhesive and pinstriping pulled off of this truck. Now, I did realize I forgot to order the Dodge 4 by 4 stickers on the tailgate. And then I'm like, well, I think I have them in stock. Turns out I've only got the 4 by 4 in stock. I must've used the Dodge side on a two wheel drive truck somewhere along the way. Um, so I gotta order those though, because that's one of those second gen things, little touches I just love, you know? I hate when people repaint these things and don't put those stickers back on. All right, it's the next morning. This stuff is all hardened up. Time to cut it, sand it. All right, we're all sanded down, ready for Bondo. See, the reason we use this stuff, 
this spray foam, this rocker is rock solid now. It expands to fill the whole thing, even inside. This rocker panel's kind of a mess in here, but you can see it's expanded and the whole, the rocker is solid as, solid as can be now. Stuff smells like my childhood, I'll tell you. Lots of vehicles bondoed. All right, our Bondo is hardened. I'm gonna take some 80 grit, sand it down. While I was waiting for that to harden, I did give the truck a nice wipe down wash. Um, so our surface is nice and clean. We're gonna give it a good scuff before we paint it. But for now, let's uh, sand this down, get that all nice and smooth, and then we can start taping up windows and stuff. Well, it ain't perfect by any means, but I think it came out really nice for considering. Really nice. A little bit of a high spot there in the middle. The other side um, is almost perfect, actually. Filled in right here. Really nice. So I don't mind on, on the driver's side, it's got if you guys can hear me here, I got the old N95 on for the dust. But uh, it's got a couple little high spots on the bottom. And I don't think we're gonna get out of there. Well, maybe we could sand it a little bit more, but where it's actually visible, feels really nice, nice and smooth. Sun's out, it is warming up nice. Gonna be a nice day for, for painting. Um, switched over to my 120 grit. I was using 80 grit for the Bondo. Now we're just gonna do some, a little bit of surface prep here. And then once we prep the surface, I'm gonna go back through, wipe it all down one more time, tape up the windows, and away we go. All right, we're all taped off, we're all scuffed up. Rust spots are, have the um, rust inhibitor on them. And uh, it is finally time for the fun part, man. We get to paint this thing. What we're gonna be using is this Rust-Oleum 2X cover. It goes on really, really nice. And it fills imperfections and cracks. It's kind of a high build without being actually high build. Uh, so we're gonna use that primer. And then Duplicolor Perfect Match, uh, Intense Blue. I promise the cap doesn't look intense blue, but the, the paint is correct. Uh, and then the 2X cover Clear from Rust-Oleum. So that's what we're gonna be using. I have painted uh, a couple trucks with this stuff, Perfect Match, and it, it does match perfect and it looks great. Um, I'll show you, uh, I think I have some pictures of one that I did here I'll show you in emerald green. Uh, so that stuff, yes, it's a rattle can paint job. That's all this thing really deserves, uh, but it's gonna come out good if it's anything like the other trucks that I've done with this stuff. So time to start spraying, uh, cue time-lapse. Kind of digging the primer gray look with these wheels to be honest with you but uh came out really nice that stuff goes on pretty good um this dupla color stuff goes on even better so let's make this thing intense blue
paint. I need one more coat. You can see some striations in the hood a little bit. We need one more coat, but not every panel needs another coat, but I'm just gonna do one more over the whole truck. But man, it is coming out really sweet. Um, yeah, oh yeah, see how you can see the striations in the tailgate? Uh, well, it's hard to tell on camera, but it needs another coat. Um, so I'll have to pick up some more paint, a few more cans, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way it's coming out though. Uh, really, really nice. So we will, uh, I probably won't even show it on film tomorrow. I'm gonna grab some more paint and then throw in headlights, taillights in the bumper. And uh, we'll do an unveiling in three, two, one. She's done. We added three coats of clear, uh, adjusted the front bumper, put headlights in, put the new tail lights in. I painted the tops of the rear bumper. So those look like crap before. Uh, man, it came out awesome. Badges are back on. The clear actually looks really good. There's a little bit of hood striation if you look close enough on it. A um, little bit there, but you really have to be kind of looking for it. Um, man came out sweet it looks like a whole new truck brand new headlights before the the front of the headlights were kind of drooping forward a little bit it didn't look very good the bumper was sagging so we adjusted that bumper back up uh maybe i should have done a new rear bumper on it we're gonna do a drop-in bed line i gotta scour a junkyard and find a drop-in for it uh, maybe should have done a new rear bumper as well but this one will probably clean up okay i gave it a quick wipe um, but I think if I polish it, it'll come out okay. And to paint in these things made a big difference too. So there you have it, guys. A quick $500 redneck restoration on the beloved second gen five speed. Um, well, it might've been closer to 600 by the time I bought that extra paint because I did run out of paint. But it's awesome to have this thing in the driveway. I'm so tired of white vehicles. I got white stuff everywhere. I mean, I don't know why, not on purpose, just the way it ended up. So looks awesome. I am so happy with this looks so much better so much better still waiting on my turbocharger on the shelby but uh, hopefully that's in soon in the meantime we've got some work to do on the 08 uh, manifolds ball joints stuff like that so we got plenty to do around here appreciate you guys watching thumbs up the video comment down below and uh, tell your friends about us we'll see you on the next one